Hi everyone, this is Lahiru, I'm from ABC's Anesthesia and this is Ane, one of the medical students. Now, we're going to go through bag mask ventilation and the great thing about this is that there really isn't that much to know about bag mask ventilation to know everything that I do know as a consultant anaesthetist. So if you know these steps, theoretically you know everything that I want to know about how to get oxygenation and ventilation into a patient. Now, what we're going to go through is the principles firstly of bag mask ventilation is that really what you need is a good seal of the face mask and what you're trying to achieve with that is positive pressure. If I can get a pr the pressure correctly, it's going to be able to put oxygen and ventilation through the mask, holding that pressure through the airway down into the lungs to inflate the lungs. So that's pretty much my goal and all of these techniques will be to enhance that goal. Now the broader scope of this is if I want to oxygenate someone, I go from less invasive to more invasive techniques. So I've got my bag mask ventilation, um, I want, I've got an LMA ventilation, intubation with an endotracheal tube, and I guess the most invasive would be cutting the neck to do a cricothyroidotomy or some kind of surgical airway. So first of all, these two are actually the things that will help me create a really good seal. Appropriate sizing of my mask and creating a good seal. So what that means is that I want this mask to fit exactly perfectly around the face and the perfect landmarks here are the bridge of the nose, that point there, and this chin dimple here. If you put the mask like that, you can see that there's you know, key clues in the anatomy to how it should fit. Now, if the mask is too big, you might see it kind of going over the edge of the chin or not properly covering the mouth. And I want you to know that regardless of the size, these are your endpoints that you need to create a really good sealing face mask. The next thing is actually creating a better seal. So let's say I've still got a leak there's many ways you can get a better seal, depending on the problem. Like for example, Anna here's got a beard, so that's gonna make it more difficult to create a seal. You might even wanna shave the beard, or you might wanna put some tegaderms around that to help, help with a seal. One of the other things is, sometimes when you're bag masking someone, just remember, you've got two hands, and also the hands of your mates. So imagine you're having a bit of trouble sealing, I might get both my hands there in the right grip, and that would help me achieve my seal and say I'm still getting a leak, maybe the face is drooping in the way, maybe the patient has dentures in and the dentures are out so the face is falling away, or maybe there's some kind of mass inside or outside the face. Again, I could be holding the mask like this and I'll get someone else to hold the bridge of the nose, another person to you know, hold the mask to avoid a leak. And these are all the things you can do to really maximize the pressure and the seal that you can achieve with this mask. Finally, there's only a couple of other things you need to know, that's maneuvers and adjuncts. These maneuvers and adjuncts just enhance the pathway. The passage is optimized with these devices. So the maneuvers are pretty easy. Jaw thrust, head tilt, and chin lift. Now, I'll show it in a future video. Essentially, we're trying to open up that airway by creating good position, a jaw thrust through the angle of the jaw here. In fact, I might just demonstrate on you. If the, now, if an A was lying down, uh, a head tilt is just that, and a chin lift is just that. So essentially I'm trying to put my fingers at the bottom of his chin and just lift forward that way. Now the jaw thrust can be a bit more uncomfortable, like if I was doing it from the front, I'm just finding the angle of the jaw here and then just thrusting forward. That's a really great way of pushing the tongue off the back of the throat, the back of the pharynx, opening up the airway. But it's also really great because it kind of gives a bit of pain. So if you have a patient who's narcotized and just not responding that well, that will not only open the airway, but that little bit of pain might stimulate your patient to breathe as well. And again, I'll show this on future videos where we've got the proper mannequin. Um, the final thing we'll do, we'll actually go and show you some oropharyngeal airways and how to size them. Here is an oropharyngeal airway called a Gadel's airway, and this is a nasopharyngeal airway called an NPA as well. So I've got here an OPA or NPA, Gadel or nasopharyngeal airway. Now these are pretty simple devices. Essentially, I've got two apertures into the throat, I've got, the, I've got here the mouth and also the nose. And essentially you want them to get behind the tongue down to just below the tongue, just above the larynx, above the airway. And so the way to size it makes a lot of sense. So if we're the nasopharyngeal airway, I go from the nostrils there down to the angle of the jaw. And that's about the right size. Again, I don't have to be perfect with sizing. I just got to give it a go, something that's approximately right. And if it works, that's great. And if it doesn't work, I need to modify and either get a bigger or smaller one. Same with the Gadel. I'm sizing it from the side of the angle of the mouth to the angle of the jaw. There's many ways to size this, but that's just one of the ones that works for me. And again, I just need it close enough to make sure that I'm roughly achieving around the back curvature. Uh, so great, that's bag mask ventilation. That's everything I know about bag mask ventilation. And we'll go through all the practical stuff in another video. Uh, good, thank you very much.